for donating uh, cryptocurrency? I think there's a lot there. It's tax efficient. Um, it's easier, right? Uh, so through the giving block or through those organizations that have the ability to donate crypto directly, you don't have to go through the conversion of fiat or to stablecoin or anything like that. You can just click go um, and do a wallet to wallet transfer. So it's easy. A lot of the people I know in the community are starting to think about their wealth in terms of crypto, right? So like what you have and kind of what your bag is filled with giving that without having to like do the flip-flop between currency. Um, we in particular, uh, so we have a huge international operation. We're in 11 different countries. Crypto's pretty easy to move around and create liquidity on the ground where we're doing business. So you're saving us time and effort. Um, and yeah, it's, um, it's just the right thing to do. And I, I would argue that it builds visibility um, into the generous nature of this particular economy adds legitimacy um, and kind of forces organizations like ours um, to start thinking about this as a treasury asset, a tax optimization asset, a community uh, to engage with on their own terms and not an afterthought. And I think that's good for everybody over the long term. Right, right. And that is definitely one of the best aspects of the cryptocurrency industry is the amount of giving and the amount of people who will give for charity is really high in this uh, in this community that I've seen. And everybody usually wants to pay it forward because it usually means that somebody else can benefit later. And I love the fact that you all have created that on ramp for new users to uh, be able to lower their tax liability or to just donate without having to go back to cash, because that seems to be the goal here, right? You know, a lot of the industry is created so that you don't ever have to go back if you don't want to. Um, so this is amazing as a platform, both uh, uh, indeed. And I wanted to ask you, Pat, uh, do you think that blockchain technology is better suited for public audits than how funds are moved currently? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, this comes down to like the word anonymity in crypto, which nonprofits like the, the clients that we serve are usually kind of confused about. Um, there's an interesting phenomenon that we see, for instance, in this case. So we have an anonymous giving option in our product that allows donors to give crypto to a charity without telling the charity who they are. Uh, almost all the charities we support use that option. They all have the choice to turn it off if they don't want. The reason that they feel comfortable taking anonymous crypto, whereas they don't even take anonymous traditional assets, is because of blockchain, right? Because they know that these uh, institutional accounts they're accepting crypto through, the surveillance network that connects all the different exchanges, the degree to which the industry is now regulated and partner with the right sorts of you know law enforcement and regulatory connections to make them feel safe. Um, we've gotten to that point where because it is so auditable, um, they feel comfortable taking payments and, you know, knowing where the money is coming from and knowing that they're being protected by like a real safe financial infrastructure. While at the same time, the word we're using here for the donors, right, is anonymous. That is a donor who's sending a donation to a charity without revealing who they are. Um, and we've been talking about more of those stories recently, right? So like institutional transparency, individual privacy and anonymity both being protected simultaneously. We have donors just uh, over the last few months, particular stories we've been sharing. Um, one was a man who was closeted, who supported an LGBTQ organization with a six-figure donation for the first time in their life because they would have otherwise never done that. They're not going to connect some big contribution to an organization that could out them and change their lifestyle. We had another person, NFT artist, donate three and a half million dollars. They don't want their friends and family to know that they suddenly got rich. And I think that's kind of a reasonable consideration. But they want to do something amazing with a big pile of money they've never had access to. They were able to do that. And they wrote us a beautiful note, um, pretty much saying, like, it's amazing that you allow us to make this transaction without telling the individuals on the other end of it who we are. While at the same time, the charity can know that the account that that's coming from is not like ISIS or whatever it might be. It's not coming from a sanctioned country. The exchanges and the institutions are regulated and transparent while protecting that privacy for individuals. I think that's what we want to get out of the tech. And I think that's what we're seeing today. Right. And I, th I think that's really an advantage. Uh, to, and Jason, you can speak to this as well. Uh, do you able to back on this a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so all of that big plus one, um, and I don't know if anybody caught the big argument between Elon Musk and the UN regarding $6 billion and, and donation and all of that other fun stuff. But with that came a call for open source accounting, right? Um, and I think blockchain would be not only all the know your customer stuff about like where your funds come from, but our North Star is if, if a donor could track their dollar all the way through our organization to a recipient, 
Uh, we are actively exploring using blockchain for complete transparency of how we spend our donors' money in pursuit of our mission um, and are very excited about these technologies as a methodology to do so. Um, I am owned by the public for the public good. The public, like any owner, should be able to audit my books whenever they want to. Blockchain allows that to happen. Um, and that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, and it builds more trust, right? Because you look at some of the charitable organizations uh, where people have donated and they're like, well, I don't really know where my $10 or $100 went. I, I couldn't tell yeah. you, but I'm sure they got it. They just kind of give it to them because they have a big name and this builds more trust, right? Yep, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and that is one of the big things about charity is being able to know, like you said, basically, like they say, from farm to table, seeing exactly where I sent it and then how it's proliferated throughout the organization to who has actually received it. So all of that is amazing. And I think that is, in my personal opinion, blockchain is the best way to audit it. So everybody has access. And uh, you taught me a new term, open source accounting, uh, which <laughs> is uh, Elon definitely Musk coming up. Elon Musk made it up. <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I, I wanted, uh, Pat, if you could describe to us, uh, earlier you discussed the lowering of tax liabilities. Could you walk us through how that um, uh, how that is possible for corporations as well as individuals? Uh, how can they lower their tax liability by uh, donating currency. hundred percent. We've had so many whiteboarding sessions to try to make this really simple. And we've never been able to crack. We've been doing this since 2018 and having the same conversation. So I will try my best to sort of simplify mm -hmm. it. Um, there's one major um, factor here when you're giving to a charity. Most people are giving US dollars when they give here in the US. And what that means right. is you, you give it to a charity, the tax implications, generally speaking, are just a write off. So the donation you're making to a charity uh, you could reduce that amount of money from the income that the government is otherwise taxing you on. So um, it's not like a one-to-one -one conversion necessarily. There are certain rules around it, but you can donate money to a charity, which reduces your taxable income. That's an amazing tax incentive and an incentive to give to, to nonprofit organizations. There's a secondary layer when you give appreciated property, which is like a non-cash asset. They call it in the nonprofit industry. So stocks, a house, a car, jet ski, Whatever it is you want to give, some things easier to give than others. The easiest, of course, being right. cryptocurrency. The additional benefit there is when you give that to a charity, you not only get the full value of the write-off and the charity gets the full value of what you've given them, but you don't owe taxes on it. So an example is you know, long-term cap gains over a two-year uh, period, right? You're giving mm -hmm. your Bitcoin, whatever else it might be. I'd have to look because the market is very volatile right now, as we know. But uh, last we checked, it was something like 12x. Uh, over the last two years. That's how much your asset would be up. If you're giving a million dollars to a charity and you're thinking about giving it out of your bank account, what crypto users need to know is if you give them the million dollars you have in crypto, but you don't want to lose crypto, right? Like that's what you're investing in. You can give the million dollars in Bitcoin. You get the million dollar write-off. You also just erased mm -hmm. close to probably $300,000 in tax liability for the, uh, the federal capital gains tax rate of 23%, and then a state tax rate of 7 or 8%, whatever it might be. That's gone. And you can now take the million dollars you have in the bank if you wish. You don't have to do this last step. And you can buy a million dollars in Bitcoin. That Bitcoin is now a today's cost basis. You don't owe taxes on it. And it's the same thing as if you gave cash. You end up with the exact same crypto position, but you have no tax liability on it uh, until it goes up again. So... Um, for people who want to do something philanthropic, who are holding appreciated crypto but are giving cash, you're ultimately just setting a little bit of extra money on fire. It is no additional implications for the charity so long as it's easy to take, which is something that we work on. Um, and you get to actually increase your, your crypto position by reducing your tax liability. So it's hyper efficient and it's uniquely important in a year like this one where most people's appreciated value of their crypto is up disproportionately compared to other years. So. If you're doing a big donation this year to a charity, like we strongly recommend you do that using crypto because you're probably going to give that charity a bigger gift because of how much money you're saving on your taxes. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to have a lot of people watching who are definitely going to start donating a lot more now <laughs> based on that. And, well, we hope and so. Jason, yeah, exactly. I, I hope so, too. And Jason, speak about the uh, volatility associated with cryptocurrency. Has that been an issue before or has that been a question that has come about from anybody that wanted to donate? Um, my pitch on volatility is the world is filled with lots of assets with lots of volatile prices. Um, oil goes up and down, crypto goes up and down. Um, 
I think the the clean answer to your question is it's caused me no problems, um, you know, other than winners and losers in the market. Um, you know, I don't see any problems other than that. Uh, I think over the next couple of years, as regulation questions are settled, um, as counter cyclical assets hit the market um, and investors are able, particularly institutional investors, are able to do a diversified portfolio of crypto assets. Um, volatility yeah. won't be a conversation we're having in 2023. I think the market will have matured. Um, and I think the transactional aspects of the market will start to outpace the speculative asset as aspects of the market. I think organizations will start using it for treasury. It will be a way to move money around. It will be part of the formal economy. Um, you know, that will have a speculative component to it. Um, I just think it's a, a new thing that moves a lot um, that makes it attractive for risk-oriented investors um, or people who believe their vision is clearer than others as to what the future holds. Um, I'm all for that. I, I envision a world without poverty in my lifetime, um, and that's a that's a big dream to be, dream to. And um, I, I don't think that um, you know digitizing currency and taking it out of the hands of government is a is a much bigger dream than that. So I'm excited for both those things to happen together. Right. Yes. And, and volatility, I've always stated, that's a short term problem. That's one of the things that if you're looking at it in a short term way, yes, may, it may seem volatile. However, like you said, by 2023, 2024, the more liquidity enters the market, the less volatility and the less I believe it'll be an issue. Because as Pat just said, if you have uh, <laughs> if you have a 12x on what you just created, volatility is good. Right. Uh, so even though it's seen in that bad light is, hey, we have made this amount uh, from this cryptocurrency, um, just because it's down day to day, that's not going to keep me away from giving charitable uh, donations. So uh, glad to hear that. And I want to shift gears a little bit back to you, uh, Pat. I believe you mentioned, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jason, I believe you mentioned Jack Dorsey, his first tweet being an NFT that was donated to yeah. you. What was it like having him make that, uh, <laughs> making that, that, was that call? <laughs> And I believe, I mean, Twitter was on fire. I remember when it happened, uh, just because as soon as he put it up, I was like, yeah, this is easily going for six to seven figures. Yeah, so that was before my time. I joined in May. I'm relatively brand new to give directly. Um, it was an amazing piece of generosity. Um, put right. NFTs on everybody's radar. And, and by the way, we love Jack Dorsey for that two and a half million dollars. I think we've gotten close to $10 million in NFT proceeds this year. So that entire community um, has a heavy bias towards generosity. Um, the guys at Artblocks in particular encourage percentages to go to nonprofit. We're one of the recipients of a number of those. Um, but in general, new asset classes, new stores of value. Um, we love attention. Um, and Mr. Dorsey has been um, very generous with us overall in both crypto uh, and cash. And we thank him for his continued support. And yeah, pretty, co pretty cool. <laughs> oh, definitely cool. And, and Pat, as far as the strategy for the giving block, uh, have NFTs been integrated as well as a way to raise funds? Yeah, definitely. Same uh, or, or similar story, right? Like over this year, we've seen tens of millions of dollars in, in donation volume that we've processed coming from the NFT community. It is a big uh, learning curve for nonprofits and for crypto users. Uh, funny enough, just because the vast majority of the donations are coming in crypto, but they're coming as a result of the growth of the NFT market. So there aren't a whole lot of NFT artists and creators and platforms who are donating NFTs directly to the charities and the charity is taking ownership over the actual NFT itself. It's a lot of people making money building, um, you know, these platforms and then launching NFTs and, and creating cool art. And as they make that money, they are, you know, accumulating capital gains, tax burdens, or just making a bunch of money and wanting to do something super cool for an amazing cause. And they're donating to our nonprofits as a result of that. But we do have to talk nonprofits off the ledge. A little bit we had a being the fun police a little bit on crypto where they're like <laughs> nfts are hot like we need to do an nft auction this quarter we need to like drop everything else we're doing and i'm like let's like w crawl walk run right like there's a lot of people <laughs> just make money who probably want to donate to you because you're awesome and maybe they can do a gallery or like do a drop and they can donate proceeds instead of you like minting your own nfts and trying to learn everything from the ground up um and then we have mm -hmm. nft artists who are like trying to transfer sometimes nfts directly to the charities we generally recommend for the sake of everyone, like just donate the crypto instead, just because it can be difficult to determine the actual value of something when it gets deemed art, just because there used to be 
This is again tax jargon, but pretty much like there used to be billionaires who would have, you know, they'd scribble something on a napkin, their buddy was an appraiser, they'd say it's worth a billion dollars and they'd never pay taxes again. Um, <laughs> so nonprofits taking ownership over NFTs directly can be from like an accounting uh, and compliance standpoint a bit more complicated. So I would encourage NFT artists, you're trying to do something awesome with your NFTs, making the nonprofit take ownership of that could create complexities for them. So if you can do something with the art to, to drive attention and drive revenue or make direct contributions in crypto, that's a good starting point. Uh, although it's like not off the table for charities to, of course, have their own FTs and, and do cool stuff with it. Right. Yes. And it's just doing it the right way. Um, right. Because it's still sort of a gray area with NFTs as far as their value and how much it can be worth. Because like you just said, somebody can just spin up an NFT uh, create a floor of a million dollars and again, like you said, never pay taxes again just by donating it, quote unquote. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely a new market and, and figuring it out for you guys, uh, I'm sure, will be a long term project. So uh, jumping to uh, nonprofits, uh, what types of nonprofits can work with your company and accept donations? Uh, I'll start with you, Jason. Uh, I don't think I understand the question. Who can give us money? Yeah. Is that the question? We'll, oh, we'll, we'll, take uh, we'll take anything. <laughs> we'll take I, anything from anybody. Uh, we've got lots yeah. of crypto. So we have lots of buttons on our website, givedirectly.org, where you can donate most of the major coins. If you've got something exotic, um, then we have our own wallets and hardware wallets, first party wallets. Um, uh, reach out at info at givedirectly.org and we'll figure out a way to take ownership of it um, and make it do some good yeah. in the world. Yeah, and and so far, what uh, cryptocurrencies have you seen have been the most popular? And not just cryptocurrencies, stable coins. Uh, which cryptocurrencies or stable coins uh, have been the most popular you've seen so far? Uh, and so the Bitcoin and the Ether community have been in dollar value the most generous to us. Uh, we've received donations in thirty five other coins. We had a. Sh coin called good ship launched with us as the beneficiary of the chain um uh and we get a lot of usdc um stable coin and we are we haven't picked which coin we're going to use but we are looking to do an end-to-end -end stable coin um donor to recipient um so basically we're going to build a, a wallet mapper to get money to our recipients um and so anybody who's got a low gas fee uh stable coin network that they want want to recommend us looking into um we're we're looking at kind of getting ourselves out of the way and directly connecting through stable coins donors to recipients next year well probably you're about to get flipped probably, <laughs> cool. you're about to probably get in flipped. kenya, probably in kenya. <laughs> beautiful oh yeah in fact uh to you which uh, cryptocurrencies have you seen that have been donated what are the most popular ones that have been donated uh, towards the giving block. Yeah, to touch on your original question also, just give directly is um, you know, a nonprofit themselves or a nonprofit platform. So to answer your question as to like what nonprofits can accept donations, in terms of the tax description that I'm giving you, it's any 501c3 organization. Okay. So again, it's charities as you would expect a charity to be, your standard nonprofit, uh, universities and schools, anyone in the EDU space, private schools. Um, faith-based organizations, places of, uh, of worship, um, anyone with a 501c3 status. So uh, donor advised funds and institutions are setting up with us a lot more. And then in terms of the cryptocurrencies that are coming through, this is again a fun part because we work with charities on crowdfunding. Like we, we have donor advised funds who raise hundreds of millions of dollars in crypto, but then we have uh, hundreds of nonprofits with you know five figure plus crypto programs where they're fundraising. In terms of activity, this year, we've seen the rise of meme coins, of course. So like Doge and, and Shiba Inu have been really exciting. They're not driving the same amount of volume. But in terms of activity, like we had a tweet from the American Cancer Society this year. We like told the nonprofits to announce that they're taking it once it got listed. Um, and it was the best performing tweet they've ever had outside of, I believe, one celebrity death announcement. Then everyone in the leadership is like, oh, I guess we need to tweet about Doge a lot now. And I'm like, not necessarily. Like, you don't need to. You don't want to be a meme. But it's amazing that yeah. this is happening. And um, same thing, like, uh, we, if you know the Team Trees campaign from last year with Elon Musk donated and all these other people, it's like $1, one tree. We launched Team Seas with them, their, um, their cryptocurrency option for them this year, I should say. And Dogecoin mm -hmm. donations that were just 69 Dogecoin or 420.69 
just relentlessly <laughs> coming in still to this day and tons of Twitter activity. It's driven in a lot of other crypto donor communities. So they don't necessarily have as big of bags, but they're really active, really charitable. They're excited about the initiatives. And then Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two main communities. Until this year, it was all Bitcoin all the time. Ethereum was still prominent, but sort of behind the scenes. And then with the rise of NFT philanthropy and all the stuff we're just seeing, you know, the, just the, the, the advent of Web3 in a more, um, you know, taking shape this year, Ethereum actually is starting to flip Bitcoin when it comes to generosity, despite the market caps not having flipped yet. The, the community right. is giving that much more and that disproportionately to the point where on Crypto Giving Tuesday, for the first time, we had more ETH donation volume uh, than we mm-hmm. had Bitcoin, which was pretty astounding for us, considering we used to call the event Bitcoin Tuesday because it was that dominant. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it seems as though NFTs are doing well. Uh, a lot of Ethereum people have some extra Ethereum around to donate. So uh, definitely, I, I mean, in, in my opinion, the best way to get rid of uh, tax liability is donation. Uh, there is no point, in my opinion, taking on that tax capital gain. So the fact that it's moving to Ethereum just shows the growth of the market. So um, uh, I wanted to ask, so for you both, and I'll start with you, Jason, what does the future of charitable donations look like in the crypto world? Uh, are there any new innovations that you see, uh, any new ways of giving, uh, any new different programs that uh, crypto can support in the future? Uh, so I think yes to all of those things. Um, I'm not going to show my own stupidity and predict what the future looks like other than it will be um, new technologies. Um, somebody will figure out the energy efficient chain question. Um, smart contracts that bake a uh, percentage of transactions um, going towards charity over time um, as things like NFTs and whatever the next generation of those look like is already here. I expect that to evolve. Um, I expect those preferences for transparency um, in those chains to drift over um, into the rest of the world in both the nonprofit and for-profit sector. Um, as those market cra- caps grow, I expect political power within that to grow and for um, the crypto community to continue to innovate. Um, and I would expect the traditional economy um, to start to adopt some of the components within um, that. And I think that bias towards social consciousness in these communities and that yeah, kind of like people hoard dollars, people give away crypto is um, is kind of a thing as more and more of the world's wealth lives in that. I expect that wealth to be doing that which our governments have not been doing, which is taking care of each other um, and doing good in the world, which is awesome. And I'm all for it. Absolutely. Bright future indeed. And Pat, yourself, what do you see the future of charitable giving in the crypto industry going? Yeah, I'll I'll take the other side of it just because it's a bit of an untold story in terms of like how crypto is changing uh, the charitable industry. Um, There's a few things that are happening that are really cool that crypto users deserve a lot of credit for. So I'm a person who actually came from the nonprofit industry into crypto, not the other way around. Um, So I've gotten to watch some shifts begin to happen. One big thing is charities are really afraid to... Um, have endowments to, to other than universities, of course, but to put money away for a rainy day. So, like, there are certain things they need to spend money on that are require risk. Where they, you know, if this works, we will 10x our impact. If it doesn't work, we're going to have a shortfall. Um, and they can't take those sorts of risks that the private sector takes. So, like, a lot of their progress gets stunted as an industry. It would be like telling families that you have to spend all of your money on your kids' shoes and clothes and food. This is no college fund which I just don't think is smart long-term thinking. The crypto industry is shifting that for charities, which is really cool because donors are literally coming to our nonprofits who don't even have crypto treasury management stuff with us. Like we do that, but the majority of nonprofits don't have treasuries. And they're saying, I'll give you a million dollars in Bitcoin, but I want you to hold it. And charities Mm -hmm. are overjoyed by it. They're going, it's not just the fact Mm -hmm. that they're getting the money. It's the fact that we get to put it away, but we don't have to just throw it at something this year arbitrarily. And it's allowing them to think big picture. It's like, we can try new things. We can experiment. We can do something that can actually 10x our impact. And there's something really beautiful about that. So crypto users giving charities the ability to hold money for the long term, you get to watch your crypto grow within you know the confines of a a charitable endowment. It's super cool. But it's also just giving charities the freedom to be more innovative and take the sort of risk that actually solves problems, I think, a lot faster. So that's super cool. 
anonymous giving, it's changing that. So again, a lot of the charities we work with never took anonymous donations until they worked with us. And now they've changed their gift acceptance policies and they do it all over the place. That's unlocked a lot of different types of giving, you know, just in the same ways that you think of crypto, you know, women in Afghanistan can't have their own bank accounts, but they can build wealth with Bitcoin, you know, or other cryptocurrencies, or there's a human rights actor in China who's put out like amazing publications, but they can have a bank account, but they can actually have like a donate Bitcoin tip button, like these outside financial systems. There's donors that exist like this who haven't been able to make donations because they're afraid to put their home address and tie it to whatever it is, the gift that they're making. They're afraid to be outed as whatever it is they might be. Um, there's something beautiful to trust your personal identification information in order to do something good with your money. Crypto is unlocking that in the charitable sector. And then finally, it's just making nonprofits get younger, which they desperately need. So they, they have old folks who have a lot of money who do non-cash asset giving. They, they give 100 grand a year. That's never been young people because young people don't have accountants and tax considerations. They hit their peak earning years later. What we're getting are people in their 20s and their 30s making a ton of money, not only trying to give that away to do something awesome, but they're like, oh, I didn't know about the tax advantages of doing this stuff. So they're locking these giving relationships with young folks, and it's making them open Twitter accounts, and it's making them get on TikTok, it's making them mobile optimize their donation pages, and it's going to mean 10 years from now they're still around. Um, so I think those things are, are super exciting for the industry and crypto users because of their generosity. Like They, they get full credit for all of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I love to hear it and definitely excited for the future of charitable giving in the crypto world. And I want to thank you both for coming on. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Pat, for coming on today to talk about this uh, this industry being uh, available for people to give to charity and to do things around the world. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. And that's it for this episode of Community Crypto. I'm your host, Isaiah Jackson, and every week we're building a global community with local crypto groups. So be sure to tune in every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern on Coindesk TV. See you then.